All right, welcome back to this week. Uh, what episode? I forget what number it is, but we're going to show you the joint geometry and weld symbol that you would expect to see on a fillet weld uh, of a T-joint. And I'm going to do both sides. One side of the T, I'm going to try and put a single pass down. The second side of the T, I'm going to put a three pass fillet down. I think for this purpose, I'm just going to keep it in the flat position, well, which really is the 2F position in this instance. And then we're going to cut it, etch it, and go from there. We can see here in the background that little Lincoln 140C because my new toy has not shown up. That's what we're going to be using. So your, your, uh, your typical T-joint that we're going to have here, I guess. I mean, we're just going to go to the basic one today. And uh, what I think I'll probably do, again, is uh, working with some uh, quarter-inch thick steel. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just put a the one weld on one. And I may try and do a uh, just a, a three-pass weld on the other side, something like that. And uh, I'm not necessarily going to go ahead and try and get any different weld sizes, fillet weld sizes per se. But anyways, what we will look at is the weld symbol for this. is again this being the other side of this reference line so this is your reference line this is your leader line so other side arrow side so what's that mean the in in reference to where this is pointing this is the other side and what it's saying is that it's going to be you take this and really this detail wouldn't have this so this arrow would probably be more more along these lines and so the other side of where it's pointing is you take this and you go through the joint and now this is your other side so there's your fillet over here so then we're also got the arrow side which is then over here. So that's the uh, that's what it looks looks like. Um, I guess if I what I'm going to expect to see. Gonna expect that this this single pass weld is gonna penetrate in and do a lot of a like a half moon type shape into the into the metal there. Whereas over here we're gonna I mean the smaller it's gonna do kind of the same thing. And then this is going to you may not see the individual passes, but I expect something like this to take place. So, with that, let's weld it up, cut it, etch it, and see what we get. Alright, so just like last time, I've got a self-shielded wire that I'm using with this. And I've also got my little third hand that I'm going to be using to hold this up that I can uh, get it tacked in place. You know, just it just holds it where I need it so that I can tack it hands free from holding the material myself. So like I said, first pass here, I'm just uh, going to do a single pass.
All right, so maybe a little difficult to see, but right there I kind of favored more towards the bottom side to get that to wash in more. And then here I've got more of an angle going into the vertical member because I'm washing in my third pass up on it. show some of the results. That self-shielded wire can put down a pretty nice looking profile. You just you got some cleanup, you got a lot of weld spatter that you have to clean off. And, and honestly with the wire brush I haven't had any really great luck with getting the uh, the flux off of it, the slag that it leaves behind. And so I always hit it with a wire wheel normally if it matters. So. Here we have the, uh, the outcome of that single pass side. And on the other side, you can see it just puts down a really nice, uh, like a flat and smooth face on your weld for stacking them. So I really am quite impressed with that wire, but I mean, it puts out, the amount of smoke it puts out, it's probably, it's no better than stick welding. I mean, if you've got some things in your shop that you have to keep the smoke away from. So, anyways, let's uh, let's cut it. Let's evaluate. And this one here is right cut right off the end. And the uh, tack would have been right on that well, to the left side or the multi-pass weld. So that pinhole right there that might be caused from improperly being able to tie into that tack. So then And this one, it's still got a pinhole there, so maybe that tack has nothing to do with it. Another thing that I would look at, and I would probably look at this more, I might try and blow this up or magnify it if I was really going to evaluate this, because on a single pass, even though it appears to have got good fusion, you can see on the bottom fusion zone as it comes back up to the upright member of the T-joint that there's kind of a straight line that goes into the uh, root of the weld and that may be that it didn't really it fused into the upper, upper member but it didn't fuse down below it into the bottom base member on that part. Now for this one this one looks pretty good actually. Maybe a little bit on the single pass side, but the multi pass side, it looks good. Try and get an angle that can contrast that a little better for you guys, but all in all I think I still believe this is a really good way of looking at your welds, so. Alright, I just wanted to remind everybody that I'm always looking for some comments and some feedback. If you guys have something that you want me specifically to jump ahead to, I'm doing these in no real specific order. So if you have something, leave me a comment and I can look at making that into one of my future videos and hopefully get it uh, done sooner rather than later for you guys. And uh, any other feedback that you guys have is appreciated as well. So thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos like this.